Welcome to Reread. Here I am, heir to the empire. Let's do this. Been a while. This is the big one. Uh, someone had told me about this, and I actually went back and looked it up, but uh, Lando introduces Luke to hot chocolate. And I didn't know that until a couple of years ago when someone on my stream said hot chocolates in the EU. I said, where? They said, the very beginning of Heir to the Empire. And I looked it up. I was like, shut up. So reading it here again, uh, Lando, how did Lando find out about hot chocolate? That's one of those things that's kind of too close to home. People who love Heir to the Empire, if this was in a Kevin J. Anderson book, people would just make fun of it forever. Like, oh, hot chocolate. He called it hot chocolate. But because it's in Timothy Zahn's Heir to the Empire, nay, we say anything bad about that, then it's okay. Uh, and I, I don't care. I don't care either way. I'm just saying that if it was in anyone else's book, people would complain about that author. But Timothy Zahn can do no wrong, especially in this book, I guess. Now, I love how Thrawn refers to the New Republic as the Rebellion. He refuses to believe that they are the legal rulers of the galaxy, the legal government of the galaxy right now. And I think that's a great mentality, that uh, a subtle, subtle thing that uh, Zahn puts in there uh, to just kind of tell you what Thrawn's mindset is. Now, Thrawn, of course, is trying to capture Luke and Leia and with his bodyguards, the Nogre, because Luke or Leia or both, he's trying to get to Jor Sabath. Sabath is a clone Jedi. Thrawn knows this, but he hires him to kind of do the Jedi mind meld or something to, you know, kind of put all his warriors at ease and at one mind when attacking to make his fleet better because he figures that the, Palpatine did this with the Force, and when Palpatine died, the Imperial Navy went into array, you know, just kind of just in, ever since then. That's why all this infighting has started. Because when Palpatine's gone, now all the children are fighting for power. And you think about this, because this is kind of true, because, you know, someone's patriarch or matriarch in the family, if he or she passes away, the rest of the family who was nice to each other only because they didn't want to get in trouble with the grandmother or grandfather, I've seen this. And when the grandmother dies, then everyone, it's every person for themselves. And it's weird to see that happen. You're like, wait, you used to be one happy family. So this is not every family, but I've seen it in other families too. So this kind of makes sense. Your grandmother has the dark side. That's what I'm saying. Anyway, Luke and Han are barely escaping uh, Thrawn at every turn. Thrawn even gets a, a fake Millennium Falcon, which fools Han at first, but then he remembers, wait, that's not the Millennium Falcon. And I remember that scene I mean, like it was yesterday. Uh, that, was, that was a big scene, I remember. Another thing I remember them saying, and Thrawn says it here, that stormtroopers are very rare, very hard to find. You can't, there's not that many stormtroopers. And that basically gets ignored through the rest of the EU when it comes to the Empire. There seems to be tons of stormtroopers. So something that Timothy Zahn stated at first, and maybe it was true at the time, but then later on they've trained tons of, maybe they put on the fast track and the stormtroopers aren't up to snuff like they used to be. Either way, they're, they're supposed to be in rare supply there. Um, Luke barely escapes Thrawn by pulling a trick on his X-Wing that kind of ruins his hyperdrive, leaves him stranded in hyperspace. Thrawn puts out a bounty. Talon Card finds him with the help of Mara Jade. They take him back to their planet where they don't know what to do with him yet. But then Han Solo and Lando come because they're trying to uh, recruit smugglers for the Republic and they want Card to join them. Well, Card hides Luke in a little shed, storage shed, and meets with them. Now, meanwhile, uh, Thrawn comes because he wants more Yal Salamari, the things that give a bubble out in the Force which prevents no one from, you know, it's basically they, they exist outside the Force, and anything 10 meters around exists outside the Force. Now, here's the thing. People hated the Vong. They hate the idea of people existing outside the Force. But I pointed out that Thrawn, or Zahn, was the first one to do this. They love Heir to the Empire. So the Yal Salamari who live outside the Force create a bubble outside the Force. You know, it's not just them. It's like everything within, I believe it's 10 meters is what we're told later on. But they accept that. Either way, I don't know. Um, but Thrawn is, uh, Pelion is uh, learning from Thrawn. Thrawn is all about art. That, that stuff's great. It's great. There's a lot of good character building here. Uh, we get to see uh, Ghent and the slicer, and we get to see a little bit of his personality, which I enjoy. Uh, T Carr doesn't know why Mara Jade hates Luke Skywalker. We don't even know yet. And when Luke escapes and grabs a land speeder because he doesn't know Han and Lander are there, T Card sends Jade after him. They both crash in the woods. The, you know, there's a scene where she's holding him at gunpoint, marching him through the forest. Card lies to Thrawn saying, oh yeah, it was just some rebel thief, and I had one of my agents, Jade, go after him. Go after him. 
And so Thrawn suspects that, hmm, could this be Luke Skywalker? You know, because Card never joined in the search for Luke Skywalker and messed up in front of Thrawn and said, well, the search is over. Acted like the search was over. He goes, the search isn't over. You know, we haven't found him yet. And, you know, Card has to kind of double take and go, oh, I mean, no one could survive in, ha uh, you know, in de the dead of space for this long in an X-Wing, you know, <laughs> trying to cover him. So Thrawn leaves a garrison of stormtroopers, which is how we know how rare stormtroopers is because Pelion's kind of shot that he'd leave such valuable resources on the planet. Uh, while Luke and Mara are marching through the forest, of course, Luke is going to save Mara's life. She still hates him. She reveals that she was the Emperor's hand. She does say she was at Jabba's palace, which I honestly forgot. I honestly forgot that was even in there, that she was in Jabba's palace. So that she's in tells the, tells the Jabba's palace now, I guess, makes sense because he already stayed in the heir to the Empire. But I, I swear to you, I, I totally forgot about that part. There's a lot of things that some things I thought would happen in book two happen in book one. And then things that, hap that I thought would happen in book one, I guess, are going to happen in book two. Uh, this is a common, uh, common thing that happens when I'm reading trilogies. I get mixed up on what happened in which book. So I'm glad I got to reread this and kind of figure things out that way. Now, uh, Card, well, Gint kind of gives too much away while he's hiding Han and Lando while Thrawn is there. And when Card returns, Han and Lando put two and two together and realize that he, Luke was the captive there. So Card decides to throw in his lot with the New Republic because it's too late. The Empire is going to skin him alive because he knows Thrawn is suspicious of him now. And so he helps them escape the Empire, basically takes out the Stormtrooper group. There's a great scene where Thrawn asks, what's the, you know, when, uh, let, me, let me hear from, what was the last report from the Stormtrooper garrison? They said, they haven't reported in yet. And Thrawn raises his eyebrow and goes, when did I tell them to re report in? He went, every 12 hours, sir. He went, how many hours since their last report? He went, 14. And it's like this tense moment, and Pallion's like, uh-oh, what's going to happen? And so Thrawn goes, they're dead. It was Luke Skywalker. <laughs> I mean, it's just really good. It's really good. He doesn't out, you know, rage or whatever. In fact, uh, well, let me go back before I'm, I'm getting too far ahead of myself. Uh, Leia, what's going on with her? Because the Nogre are trying to capture her, she, they, they fake 3 pos voice as Leia, pretend that she's on the Falcon, but basically Leia and Chewbacca on the Lady Luck, I think it's the Lady Luck, and then they go to Kashyyyk, where she uh, is meeting with the Wookiees. The Wookiees are protecting her, but of course there are no gray that have followed her because they don't fool Thrawn. And as one no gray dies, it's a really good fight scene. The other no gray has sniffed Leia and he cowers because he realizes, he recognizes that smell. And she is Lady Vader. And I love this part because she's she is the daughter of Darth Vader, their original master. And basically gives the whole spiel that Darth Vader was uh, their savior and is trying to save their planet and they owe him a life debt, kind of. And Leia's like, no, he was mistaken. The, you know, well, he said that the rebellion was destroying their planet and the Empire with Darth Vader was trying to save it. And she's like, you, you are mistaken. He is mistaken. And the way she uses her words, and again, Leia is written really well here because she's a diplomat and she knows she has to be very careful with this one. So she's using this no Gray's philosophy uh, and logic against him or her, I don't, can't remember what, 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 which, what, what gender the Nogre was, to agree to meet with their elders and let her come to the home planet. And when the Nogre gets defensive about, you say Lord Vader lies, he never lies. I, mean, I didn't say he lied, I said mistaken. And it's you know, like, it's a, it's, a, it's a war of war, words there that Leia is king over. It's, again, Leia really well written, Thrawn, great. Pelion, great. Everyone in here is great. There's a reason people love Heir to the Empire. Heir to the Empire is still good. It's still a solid book. George Sabath is in at the beginning. He kind of takes a little break here. I thought there'd be more of him, but now it's obviously going to be in the next book or the next two books there. Uh, but anyway, there's just so much going on here. Of course, there's the Battle of Slus Van, where uh, Thrawn is about to capture a bunch of these rebel ships, but then Han... Lando, they figure it out real quick. The, the uh, mole miners that were stolen from Lando's business, Lando just happens to be there and he knows an override code to make them explode, thereby foiling Thrawn. Now, instead of raging out and attacking everyone, Thrawn goes, okay, they won this, but this is just a preliminary. Uh, this wasn't a, a preliminary victory. This wasn't 
a bit part of our big game plan. Our big game plan begins now, you know. So obviously the Empire is going to get their comeuppance, or I said the rebellion, I guess, would get their comeuppance. See, I'm calling them a rebellion. That's that's what I get from reading about Thrawn so much in the next book. So the Empire is going to really start advancing and things are really going to get hairy in the next book. Now a few things I thought were interesting. In this one, uh, Mara outthinks Thrawn. Thrawn has a little trap put up for him when they come out of the forest and she kind of understands what kind of trap that Thrawn is setting for them and outfoxes Thrawn. Now this is fine. I'm fine with that, but no one has been able to outguess Thrawn. So I guess Mara is smarter than Thrawn. That's what I guess we're told here. And that, uh, like I said, that's fine. That's what uh, Zahn, Timothy Zahn wants, wants to establish there. But usually Thrawn can almost fool everyone. Sure, Han and Leia realize that's not the real Falcon, but it's a very close copy. But Mara, but they're almost food where Mara sees right through Thrawn's trap. Now, of course, that could be because she was the Emperor's hand. You could say that too, and I'm fine with that. Uh, Bors Fila is in this. He is excellent. He's, you know, a little snake who's kind of, you know, worming his way up to power. Akbar is his nemesis. This was built up in the books prior. Obviously, they knew about Heir to the Empire, but they build up that rivalry in Rogue Squadron and other books, which I thought was great. And now it comes to the head because at the end of this book, Akbar is arrested for treason and Han, Lando, Luke, and Leia have to go and find out what's going to happen and kind of rescue him in a way. Uh, overall, overall, solid book. Still a solid book. Still an excellent book. I cannot wait to talk about book two. I'll do that next time.